is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. There he is, locked and loaded, and probably hating to do this spot by now. <laughs> So, you know, it took you practically a year to figure out that the Nets really weren't going to be a threat. So where are you at right now with the Miami Heat that we, you know, we keep trying to, you know, explain to you that there's nothing here. There's there's nothing, nothing to see here. So you tell me, have have you figured it out yet? I have figured it out. Um, It's clear to me now when you look at the Heat, they have won three NBA championships. They at times have had the worst record in the league. They've done both ends of the spectrum. And Pat Riley clearly said to Andy Ellisberg and, and Eric Spolstra, you know, we've never tried this play in tournament. And, and and maybe if we're the toughest minded, hardest working team in the NBA, we need to play a few extra games before the playoffs. So instead of just going to a hotel for a week or a vacation, let's try this play in thing. Spo, make it happen. You know what, Big O, the Miami Heat are right on target. Yes, they are. They are. They, they're definitely accomplishing their goals. Yes, this is this is welcome to the play. And here's the thing, Big O, and I will be speaking to you throughout our Acura Pembroke Pines report and a redrecover.com inside the paint show. They might have to go on the road in the play in that 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 they not only have pushed the bar to a level no one expected, but right now Toronto has the tiebreaker on them is within reach of getting to number seven. And it would just be crazy for the Heat to finish their season Sunday, April 9th against the Magic and boom have to fly up to Toronto where they've not had great success. And what irony that the team that offloaded Kyle Lowry could be the team that offloads the heat season. So yeah, these are tenuous times. No one saw this coming. I know you could say you thought the heat might have a down year, but, but the way they have careened after the all-star break, I mean, let's face it, big O. You and I, okay, I didn't think they were going to be this bad. They're the better. I, they I, found I themselves. Yeah, I never thought they were going to be this bad Ira. No, Never that's what I'm saying. I'm saying I, even you, who have come on and tormented me twice a week on an accurate Pembroke Pines report, didn't yeah. see this coming. And again, it's bad by their standard. You know, oh yeah, no, right, exactly, record. exactly, yes. yeah. In Washington, you're super happy. In Orlando, you're super happy. You know, I get it. Uh, there's well, no Florida doubt. The Panthers in, in, are super happy if they're right, number right. eight. They're super right, happy right. if they have a winning record based on their season. The right, Marlins right. will have a we're over 500 parade if yes. they reach that. So it's all relative to who you are and to right. what you are. Right. You know, the Canes football team would have celebrated a 500 season. It all depends where you are and what the expectations are. And if you roll out a team with Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Tyler Hero, and some players who had proven themselves, and you have this kind of season, yeah. This season, I'm writing my Sunday column. I spoke to you about this. It's going to be on the Sun Sentinel Sunday online tomorrow. Is this the most disappointing slash frustrating heat season ever? And I say yes. Yeah, it's it's one of them. I mean, the 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 season where all the injuries and they ended up with the 15 wins and nothing went right. Yeah, and, but you uh, saw that coming. You, there I was know, a but, but it was point, just a bad year. God, there was, was a certain just... point that year when you were playing uh, Kasim Powell and Stefan Lazme and right. Chris Quinn was your starting point guard where you realized that's where it was headed. You could see that coming at the start of the season. The season after they won the championship, Big O, 2006-7. Right. By December, Antoine Walker and James Posey were kicked off the team for conditioning. By January, Pat Riley left the team for a hip replacement and poor Ron Rothstein had to coach the team. We've seen it earlier, but as far as frustration and disappointment, this has been a six-month ride of frustration and disappointment. All right, and and again, I'm going to go with my theory on this, and it's really, it's it's all Spo. Spo fools you, bro. And, uh, you know, he, the bubble, that team really wasn't that good, but at that moment, he got him to play like they could never play. The 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 journeyman, he got him to thirty one and ten that second half, and we all were suckers thinking, oh, we'll bring him back next year and spoke and do it again. No, bro, he, he that's a miracle workers once. Last year, you were one shot away from advancing big time. You really weren't that good, and I think that's what's been going on over several years now. That I don't think they're really building any great teams out there. They're not really handing him great talent overall 
It's just he does great work at times, and he's able to maximize things and get the most out of them. But in the end, you're not putting up enough stars on this team. That And, and we talk about a standard that the Heat used to have. Well, that's something that they're not living up to anymore. They're trying to unearth coal and create them into diamonds. And before, they just used to go pluck the diamonds. Let's go get Dan Marley. Let's go get Anthony Mason. Let's go get Eddie Jones. Let's go get Alonzo Mourning. Let's go get Tim Hardaway. Let's go get, you know, LeBron James and Chris Bosh and Ray Allen and Shane Battier. Let's just go grab the diamonds. And, you know, this whole thing of trying to get cute of, okay, here's our Sioux Fall uh, coal that we're trying to make into a diamond. And you have failed every single time. Nobody's turned into a diamond. They've turned into serviceable players, role players, things like that. This is what needs to change. And to me, what I've said before, what you had to do when, when the journeyman at that time, I said, what you need to do from here on out is, you know you have the best chef in the NBA. So, dude, you can't get your star this year? Fine. Load your team up with a bunch of one-year guys. Spo will get the max out of them anyway. And then next year, if you can't get your star, you bring in another one-year player and you keep your money liquid until you can get your stars, until you can bring me Dan Marley, until you can give me Shane Battier, until you can give me James Posey. If you can't give me the players that you've had in the past that can produce titles, then what the hell are we doing now? And that's, to me, what needs to change for them. Their philosophy of how they've been building teams lately and cutting corners, I think that's what needs to change drastically. See, I'm going to disagree with your premise, and I think you almost made my point for me by this. You mentioned all the players that when the Heat had a chance to take a bite out of the apple for big money, for Zoe, for the big three when they did that and that, they made the right choices. So I'm going to posit this to you, Orlando Alzagari, because – Jimmy Butler's been pretty good. Bam Adebayo's on the rise. Tyler Hero's on the rise. This, to me, does not come down to all the journeymen. This comes down to... Uh, oh, 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 Bam is not on this the rise. Comes down Bam, is to not, me. Bam is not on the rise. This Bam comes down to me. Rise. And Tyler is not. Okay, this comes down to me to the one singular move they went in 2021 when they again had a pile of money that they pushed to the table and did spend, and they failed with Kyle Lowry. Yeah. And Ando Alzagari. If they would have made the right move with that $30 million and there were plenty to be out there to made, this would be a completely different story. So as much as you could talk about the ancillary guys not upward playing, being asked to do too much, this is a stars league. Only five players play at a time. There's no other sport where a single player outside of individual sports like tennis and golf can make that much of a change. The Kyle Lowry signing and that move that year is the move that made this whole thing go sideways because he wasn't an all-star. He wasn't good enough. He wasn't healthy enough. He wasn't young enough. They got sold. Look, here's the beauty of it. You go to Acura Pembroke Pines on usually on Fridays. You're out here. They're selling you a quality vehicle and being upfront about what they have. If you want a quality pre-owned car, they give you the full inspection checklist. Jimmy Butler, the car salesman, who I would never buy a car from, goes into Pat Riley and Mickey Harrison said, I got a late model 2021 for you here. Now, this guy can do it all. This is top of the line. We're talking real leather. And they bring in Kyle Lowry. Big O, that's where it went sideways. Yes, last year they got to the end. But remember, it was Gabe Vincent in the playoffs playing for Kyle Lowry when Kyle Lowry was hurt. So if yeah. you're asking me, I understand your premise, relying too much on ancillary guys and maybe not spending it to the tax. That's a fine way to go. That's choice A. But I am telling you, if you go back and undo the Kyle Lowry deal and save that lump of money for something more like you mentioned, the Alonzo Mornings, the Tim Hardaways, the Eddie Jones, of course, the Boshes and the LeBrons, everything changes. To me, that's where you trace this all back to. No, I, I, I totally understand that. But that's kind of part of my whole point is that you went and, you used to go get the stars and you're not they getting they the didn't. stars they didn't and so instead yeah. of his 30 million paying off they had to try six other guys who were making a fifth of that and saying okay you do this instead they can't they're not that good god bless gabe vincent i do believe this gabe vincent every night goes out and gives the best version oh, for sure of gabe vincent yeah. self they play but hard. gabe vincent yeah. self gabe would probably admit this privately is not an all-star self. 
He's oh. at a different level. That's been the problem. So for as much as Jimmy Butler is having a career season, as much as where we don't know where this is happening down the road, everyone knows that Kyle is Jimmy's guy. Usually when you bring in your guy, it works. And I'll give you the example, Big O, of when it doesn't. LeBron James had a guy. His guy's name is Russell Westbrook. He brought Russell Westbrook in and crippled the depth of the team. Now the Lakers have depth again. Now they don't have Russell Westbrook. Now they might win the Western Conference Championship because they got rid of that. The Heat at the trade deadline couldn't get rid of Kyle Lowry. To me, it's very parallel right there. You let your player serve as GM, and your player failed you as GM. Yeah, yeah, but they have, Lakers, but they have two, Jimmy they have the two stars outside of, uh, of, uh, of Westbrook, which Miami does not have. You know what I'm saying? Even though Street Clothes does get injured a lot, he does have the talent. And oh, absolutely. as for Bam, Bam, Bam actually tabled off this year. He did not after improve. The break. After the All-Star break, you're 100% right, Orlando well, then Alzieri. That, and that sorry, then, that, the that, then it's eight, incomplete. And the 8-10 yeah. and 10 record, you're absolutely right. And here's my problem with this Heat team. And when you come to Bradley's postseason press conference, you can ask the questions. But here's two things that happen and I wonder about. Was Bam Adebayo's ultimate goal to be an all-star? And was it sort of mission accomplished in February? Was Tyler Hero's ultimate goal to be a starter? And was it mission accomplished in October? In other words, were enough of the prime heat goals this season on winning a championship? I don't want to call them agendas. That sort of a, a goes against the players. It might not be fair. But I think Bam wanted to prove his all-star stuff. And by golly, I did it. I think Tyler Hero wanted to show he could be an NBA starting level guard. And by golly, he did it. But that shouldn't have been the end game goals. The old yeah, MF who was pushed through of the games he played, 95% at his best self has been Jimmy Butler. And he's been oh, yeah. carrying everyone uh, else. So yeah. when he has an off game like in New York, which at times is going to happen, all of a sudden you realize, wow, the Knicks have better depth. They have guys like Quickly. They have guys like Josh Hart. They have guys who are coming off their beds, Hartenstein and players like that who are getting it done. There's no there there for the Heat this year. The depth has disappeared. So why all the why are all the numbers across the board down with the Heat? And again, I, I don't want to say it goes to coaching. I know you're high on Spo. I think they tried to do too much. I think Tyler Hero in the starting lineup, he's a better sixth man. I think Caleb Martin, and then you pull him out and Kevin Love goes in. That's been a disaster. A matter yeah. of fact. Eric Spolstra is a very good guy, respected by the players in the locker room, because he won't do them dirty publicly. He won't put their face in it. You've seen the postgame press conference. Right, of course. When you want him to rail, he doesn't. What he needs to do tomorrow at home against the Dallas Mavericks is bench Kevin Love and start Caleb Martin. That's the move that needs to be made because, big O, they were a better team when that happened. Maybe it's time also to start Kyle Lowry and to see what you have. But Eric Spolstra doesn't want to do dirty to Kevin Love. So instead, the other night, he plays him only 14 minutes, basically a nominal role, so at least he's not, quote, demoting him. Get over the whole personality thing. Get your team to his best self now. You have five days to make it right. Unfortunately, not before the playoffs, but before the play-in. Tonight, they, uh, they, yeah. uh, take, they take on the dynamic duds. No, it's I mean, tomorrow, the Dallas Mavericks. I mean, tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow, yes. the Dallas Mavericks in the worst scheduled game of the NBA season. The NBA has only two games tomorrow night. One of them is Heat Mavericks because NBA TV needs programming. The fact that the Miami Heat have not moved that game to serve our market. I see, Big O, you see it all the time. You, 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 you talk about Sean about this. You see it on the wire. The, the, the Eagles will move a game up because the, the, um, the Phillies are in the World Series or, or there's another big game in town. The Dallas Cowboys are constantly moving their games to accommodate other things. I think it's a goddamn shame that UM and FAU are making South Florida the center of college basketball this weekend and smack in the middle of it is a heat game that's important to them that could be played earlier. Because the Mavericks have not played since Wednesday. The Heat have not played since Wednesday. Instead, you're going to have the desperation bowl there at whatever you call it, arena, what everyone else, probably including me, is watching college basketball. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I think everybody will be watching, you know, UM overall. Unless you're a Heat fan that's not a UM fan, then I guess you won't care. You know what? And Even if that's the case, Big O, before the Heat game and running concurrent with it, the FAU, everyone loves Cinderella. Everyone yeah. loves the Loyola of Chicago stories, the team that get to the Final Four. For sure. That game is going to be watched by the non-sports fan because Cinderella is the ultimate sports story. So it's a hell of a college day. It's just a shame that he'd get in the way. And you're right. 
you talk about two teams hitting south right now with, with Doncic and Kyrie Irving and cratering out of the playoffs. Look, there's two things Heat fans love. They love to be in the playoffs and win, and they love to watch Mark Cuban struggle. And right now, it's like Mark Cuban made the wrong buy on Shark Tank, the way that team is playing. And you know what, Big O? The way the Heat are playing, the Mavericks still can beat the Heat. Yeah, no, I... I... I'm terrified of that, but yes, I, I, I'm well aware that they could actually lose tomorrow to the uh, to the dynamic duds, and that would just be you another know, crushing blow. Yeah, typical of of the Heat. Um, the commissioner, outside of Donald Sterling, you know, and obviously got a lot of praise for handling that. But you look at where this league is going now with this whole, you know, load management crap. And it's kind of really hurting the sport. What, what's he going to do about this, dude? What's he going to do about this? Because this is not a, this is not good for the NBA. This is a terrible, terrible look for the NBA that you just don't give a shit about your fans, and you're just going to let players take off 10, 15, 20 games, and you're paying them for a full for a full season, and yet they're not playing for full season. Hell, anymore. we saw it last night. We saw a tired Milwaukee team on the second night of a back-to-back -back featured on national TV get blown out by the Celtics. Next game, Denver Nuggets come out. Nikola Jokic, the probable or, or a 50-50 MVP candidate, doesn't play for Denver. That's your national TV fair. In a week, you're competing with the NCAA. I agree. There's only one way to do it, and that's to alter the schedule. And so, Big O, you know about this. Money talks more than anything. The NBA has a deadline of today on its new collective bargaining agreement or else they could step away from it. No one's stepping back on the money. No player who wants to play 20% fewer games is saying I want 20% less salary. That's the only way to salvage this. There are too many. Tomorrow's a perfect example. There don't need to be any NBA games tomorrow, except they have to make the schedule work so the Heat are scheduled against Dallas so that they can be ready to close their season. They need to shorten the schedule. It is just way too much and if they shorten the schedule there should be some factor in there whether it's i don't want to say full pay or not or, or award voting or something like that where you cut back on the incentives to the players you need to incentivize the players to play while also keeping them healthy there'll always be meaningless games along the way we have to accept it but we could see those coming at the end of the season yeah i think that's responsibility number one but you know what in a weak union league like the nfl you get hurt and they cut your ass. They don't care. In yeah. a strong union league like MLB, they get everything they want. The NBA is in the middle of that when it comes to the player control. It really comes down to the union. And the union is going to say, we're not putting players who are hurt out there. And you know, the old Pat Riley maximum, everyone says, don't play when you're injured. We get it. But play when you're hurt. There's a yeah. difference. Push through that. You and I push through. You push through colds. You show up to work. We all have days we don't feel like going. Everyone out there listening has days they don't feel like going to work. But if you, the car salesman at Acura Pembroke Pines, you push through because we all have a job to do. The NBA, it's a bad look, and I agree with you on that. They got to, they got to change that, man. That's uh, uh, it's, it's just, it's just, it's just weak to, to, to do that. It's just, it's not respectful it's to your fans and of the product in the NFL. When a guy doesn't play on Sundays because he's damn hurt, and yes, can't get out there because he wants to be out there. There's not the same mindset in the NBA. But that's because the playoffs are so prioritized that it's we have to be healthy for April and May. And you're right. You do have to be health, healthy for April and May. There needs to be more incentive. Look, you follow soccer, Premier League around the world. There's no playoffs. Every game matters. Players don't load manage there because they, they, they don't load manage in hockey, baby. Well, in hockey, there's just a different culture, but also, you know what, Big O? That's it's not a different culture. They got balls. They got character. They play hard for their teammates. These guys are pampered little bitches in the NBA. Hockey That's what they are. Weak, you know, I, I, you That's know what's the funny? I, I would love for all these guys to turn to their moms because all of our moms, pretty much, most of our moms balance the house, balance the kids, balance the job. And you're going to tell that woman about load management? I mean, get the hell out of here, dude. <laughs> I mean, come on, bro. This is but, ridiculous. But again, but in hockey, the NBA players have a couple of months off every season. They have their NBA All-Star break. They have days in between during the week. They've got plenty of time. Don't go out to the club, dude. You know, take care of your body if, if that's what it is. But don't give me this shit about load management. Get out of here, man. When when all the guys be before you 
weren't complaining about load management. And Michael Jordan's out in a casino till two in the morning. And then the next day he's putting 45 on your head. And I'm watching hockey players play. And I'm watching mothers all over our world carry their homes and their families and careers. And they don't have any load management ever. You know when you know when the rest of us load management? When we freaking die. That's when well, that's when load management takes over for the rest of us. These guys, yeah, like, are like, like I was trying to say, but hockey is different. With the, hockey has the weaker union, also in hockey, you can be cut during a contract at a percentage of your money. It's just the different setup. So it's not Adam Silver, Big O, who has to get on board. It's the union who has to get on board with him. The players have to be complicit in that. But you know what? If you can get paid for not going to work, if you can be Jimmy Butler in Toronto and still make four hundred thousand dollars for not working. The system is there. So this is not only on the league. This is on the players. Hockey players, warriors. You're right. Football players forced into it, take injections. That's the difference. Baseball so what, you, so what you're saying is Joe, so what you're saying is Joe Biden pays the NBA players. Oh, yeah, I'm not going there. So again, the political right. hour follows the accurate Pembroke Pines report. What I'm saying is it's the different cultures. Baseball players, Justin Verlander doesn't even start the season. My shoulder hurts. I'm not playing. It's the different cultures in the different sports. Yeah, I get it. I get it. America, we got we have plenty of Americans that were lazy uh, pulling up money from the government. So I guess NBA players figured they do it. We're, we're going to do it too. I got you. All right. Follow him on Twitter at Ira Heapy. Catches exceptional work there at the South Florida Sun Sentinel. And of course, watch him get berated here twice a week in the Acura Pembroke Pines, times. Miami Heat, and NBA report. Well, not the three because, you know, that's, Kurt takes it easy on you. I, yeah, but I you, co you come in five minutes early and set the tone for the show. So we're looking forward to all three appearances next week. We'll have a better sense of this team, I hope, after the Dallas game, but I probably feel <laughs> better. So better. <laughs> okay. All right, Ira. Have a great weekend, my friend. Monday. Okay, Thanks, Big O. Be good. That is Ira Winderman. We'll have a better sense after this weekend on the Miami Heat and the freeloaders name NBA players. This is the Big O Show! This is the Big O Show!